Hi everyone, this is uh, part of the continuing series of Chris Martinson interviews. And uh, how are you doing, Chris? I'm doing great, thanks Mike, thanks for having me on. Oh, it's great having you here. Uh, now, between the last video and this video, we were just talking about the difference between currency and money. Uh, you know, I wrote about it in my book, uh, I think I started that section of my book back in 2005, and uh, then, uh, the first episode of my Hidden Secrets of Money series is devoted solely to the difference between currency and money. And uh, money, uh, cur currency has to be a medium of exchange, a unit of account. It's got to be portable, durable, divisible, fungible, uh, and which is interchangeable. If I pay for some, if I loan somebody a $20 bill that can pay me back with a 10, a five, uh, five ones, and I don't care. It doesn't have to be the same $20 bill any $20 will do, that's fungibility. Money has to be all of those things plus a store of value. And there is no fiat cur currency that qualifies. They all lose value. And we're about to see all of them lose value very quickly coming up here very shortly. <laughs> so uh, what is your take on money versus currency? Yeah, it's a, it's a really important distinction. And I picked that up from you, that, that very important one between money in currency. And uh, I talked about that in the crash course. And I also went a little further and I built around this idea of wealth because, you know, if you talk to somebody and you say, how much, how wealthy are you? They point to the ones and zeros in their portfolio and uh, representing currency and, and says, that's how wealthy I am. Right? So actually wealth, true wealth is the source of the land. Primary wealth is, you know, owning productive land is, is having rich, you know, seams of coal that you could exploit, things like that. That's the real, that's the primary wealth. And then on top of all that primary wealth, you might have some secondary wealth, which is the means of production. It's the factories, it's productive real estate, it's things like that, right? But then real money sits on top of those, as you say, and it's a way of accounting. And so we don't all have to carry factories around with us and try and divvy them up because you can't, right? So, so money is supposed to sit there and then currency is just this other thing that got slapped on top and it was supposed to be run well, but as you point out in Hidden Secrets of Money so well, Thousands of years of humans trying to do that right, and they always fail for the same reasons, right? They, they just can't help themselves. Uh, you clip a coin, you debase it, you print a little, or you do the electronic equivalent and, uh, and think you can get away with it. But how many times has that worked so far? None. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, for, thousands, for a couple thousand years, we have proven this over and over again, that only gold and silver have proven to be money where they maintain their purchasing power over the centuries, they maintain their purchasing power. Everything else goes down. Money has to be a store of value. Everything else is currencies, and we use just nothing but fiat currencies on this planet. And, and since 1971, this is the very first time that we're going to have a currency crisis where all currencies on the planet are fiat simultaneously. Before uh, 71, there was always a precious metals backed currency, you know? We went from uh, using money to using representations of money, a certificate of money, a claim check on money was what our currency was. And then we eliminated the money that was backing it up in 1971, the last vestiges of the gold standard. So it's only been since 71 that, you know, we're coming up on 50 years here that, uh, that the world, when Nixon took the dollar off of gold, when he ended the Bretton Woods system, he took the world off of gold because uh, we were the clearinghouse for that gold standard. Uh, we were the only ones backing up our currency directly with gold and all other currencies were pegged to the dollar through gold. I mean, through, to, the, to gold through the dollar. Uh, so I think we're in for uh, some amazing changes coming up. Now, one of the things that you were pointing out in one of your videos is that uh, roughly a third of the companies in China do not have enough cash to get them through one month. About another third don't have enough cash to get them through two months, and about 20% don't have enough cash to get them through three months. So that's 80% of the, of the millions upon, you're talking about every little restaurant and every shop, plus all of the big manufacturing companies. So what do you think uh, is going to happen? You know, we're already seeing helicopter drops, the plans for helicopter drops of currency coming. 
what do you see in all this? Tell us about the stats that you've seen. Oh, great, great questions. And, um, you know, so already you mentioned it. So Hong Kong just announced they're going to give 10,000 Hong Kong dollars to every citizen who's over the age of 18. So where did that come from? Well, that's a helicopter drop. And, and that's what you do. If you need to stimulate your economy and people, but they're out of work and maybe they worked at schools, they were a janitor, they were sweeping streets and they, they are not working anymore and their cash is just getting destroyed in their bank accounts as they suck that down. And so Hong Kong said, let's put money back in because this is the, what governments are going to face and China is facing this big time. Do we let 5 million companies go out of business all at once catastrophically or do we print money and put it in their bank accounts? Hmm. You know, which right. do you think they're going to do? right? They're right. going to print like crazy. But when they print, what's happening here? These people have payroll, but they're not producing anything. So what happens when you take a bunch of money, currency, excuse me, you take a bunch of currency and you push that into millions and millions of companies who are producing nothing, right? Well, these people are still going to take all that currency. and They're like, well, I'm going to pay my people. And they're going to go and say, I still need to buy stuff. I need food. I, I, I need goods, things like that. Nobody's producing it and lots of money out there. It's very easy to predict what happens next is that currency hyperinflation or inflation, however you define, you know, where we are in that spectrum. I think that's coming everywhere. I think the United States is going to have to make the same decision. I've made the point that we are structurally absolutely unready for something like a pandemic here because we have the world's worst, most rapacious sick care system. We call it a healthcare system, but it thinks nothing of bankrupting a million families on good year, which was last year. How many families will get bankrupt if they're in or somebody in their family or extended family is now in the ICU for three weeks, which is an average stay for this thing, two to three weeks, right? You know, who's going to pay for that? And, and who's going to actually, you know, cut them a check when they lost their income because they're not at their job because they're in some sort of self-isolation or an imposed quarantine, on and on and on. What happens? Do we face the implosion of the entire system of the country or does the Federal Reserve print? and the treasury issues checks to everybody. It's very easy to predict what they're gonna do in a crisis because uh, they've always done, this is just how it works, right? So I think people need to be ready for that. I, uh, that's why I'm really, really happy to hear that you are taking some of your actual money and converting it into a ranch, which is another form of wealth, right? Less portable, but it has a different characteristic that offers different advantages. So that's what wealth should do. It should serve you in certain ways right? It either stores your wealth for you or provides other benefits and things like that. So um, I think that's what's going to happen next is a lot of people are going to come to that same conclusion, but just a few months or a year behind uh, you and I, and, and they'll get there. But when you see that scramble, especially when the ultra wealthy saying, I don't want fantasy digits, I don't want currency, I don't want representations, I want real wealth. Well, where do they go? They're not that many doorways. Right. Gold and silver are tiny in, in that overall story. They're going to U.S. bonds and U.S. dollars at first, but uh, then, uh, you know, there's going to be a currency crisis eventually. The helicopter drops should scare everybody, and we'll get back to the helicopter drops in a moment. So U.S. treasuries will go up temporarily, but then there, when the currency crisis hits, they're all going to be scrambling toward gold, silver, and potentially some cryptocurrencies, and these are such small sectors that it's going astronomical. I mean, Goldman Sachs just came out with a prediction that gold could go to 1800. And I'm going, I'm looking at it and I'm going, boys, you need to put at least one more zero behind that. By three o'clock, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the, um, I want to thank you for uh, correcting yourself and, and saying currency instead of money. And I want to urge all of our viewers to start educating people on the difference between currency and money. It's very important because you can only achieve true understanding through clear communication. And to that, to do that, you've got to define everything and you've got to define, make proper definitions. Uh, and there is a major difference between currency and money. Currency replaced money throughout the world. It was sort of like this big shell game scam that happened where they took our money away from us and gave us uh, paper tokens, paper uh, fund certificates, uh, but they're actually claims on debt. And that debt is paid by you working in the future. Every dollar that exists requires taxation in the future because it's backed by treasury bonds, which have to pay the principal and interest back in the future. So we all, it just to have dollars in our pockets, we have to work sometime in the future to pay the tax that's going to be owed on those dollars. 
So it's not money. Money has no counterparty. Uh, I mean, that's a counterparty. You have to make good on uh, your, the currency that's in your pocket in the future through taxes. So anyway, um, so we were talking about helicopter drops. You were talking about 1,800 uh, per, what was the figure, 1,300 uh, Hong 10, Kong 10, dollars? 10,000 10, Hong Kong for everybody 18 or over. 18 and over. Okay, but that's not companies. That's just individuals. What do you think they're going to have to do helicopter drops for all of these companies that can't make it through? I mean, it's, this is going, it isn't going to be uh, $10,000. It's going to be $100,000, $1 million, $10 million, depends on the size of the company, $100 million. This is going to go on and on and on, and there's different levels. And they cannot let the economy collapse, and they can't let the stock markets collapse too far because that just scares everybody when everybody looks at their 401ks and their IRAs. Uh, and the more people get scared, the more velocity falls and the more deflation we go into. Yeah, I got to tell you. So you know what they're going to do, right? They're going to do the equivalent of lying. They're going to say, oh, these are low interest loans that we're making to make it all sound official. But come on, they know as well as we do that they have no intention of being paid back by that stuff. So, so the Fed will make the money available. The U.S. government will issue low interest emergency business loans. The Fed will buy those loans off the open market if they, where they've been for like three seconds. And it's just, it, it basically, it'll just be the Fed printing money and assuming probably non-repayable corporate debt in return. So, you know, it's a couple of extra steps, but let's just be honest. You might as well have an actual printing press just throwing hundreds uh, out into the air. You know, it's just, that's what it'll be. Right. Um, and, and they cover it up to confuse people so people can maintain the narrative. They have that persistent illusion that the system is functioning and it's fair and, and money and currency has meaning, right? That's, that's the thing they have to preserve. But, you know, if you peer through that a little bit, you can get some forewarning and say, you know what? I'd rather not have what I call my wealth completely tied up in that particular game over there. I got to play it because I got taxes and, you know, and, and right. you know, Visa needs to be repaid in dollars. I get it. Um, but to as much as possible, the smart money is going to be just saying, you know, I'm going to keep as few chips as I can over there, just enough to run the system. And increasingly, I want my chips over here. Again, I think this is one of those switch on, switch off moments when the ultra wealthy say, I'm out, and they slap their currency on the table, and they look for other things that would represent true wealth uh, to them. And that's where it shifts. Gold, silver, and farmland. I've always, I've I've very often called gold in this rush, it will be, they will become unaffordium and unobtainium. <laughs> I don't know what to give the name for the farmland, but it'll be the same thing. It's going to go up big time. There's any productive uh, thing of true wealth, as you call it, because the true wealth is all of the uh, things and the goods and the services that we create for one another. It's not the accounting uh, mechanism, which is the dollar. Uh, that's a temporary storage device and an accounting mechanism. Uh, so I think that we are in for the biggest, I mean, this is going to be an, an incredible disaster. And what I see is that there's this, you know, normally you've got this bell curve of probabilities, right? Uh, and probabilities and possible. And what I see is that we've got this hugely skewed um, uh, bell curve where it has you know one uh tail a, a fat tail on one end and then no tail on the other end uh we have a bell curve of probabilities here that go from severe severe recession depression to modern dark ages i mean this could be a complete collapse of the financial system uh i i think it's going to get really bad and it's going to be uh, the World Health Organization and the CDC's fault that this got so bad. Yeah, it, you know, you need trust to get through something like this. And already we had frayed social trust. We saw it in the Yellow Vest movements, the Hong Kong protests. You see it in the number of people who no longer tune in or believe uh, national news. You know, it's embarrassing. My little YouTube channel gets more views than, than some of the big so-called network chains from time to time, right? And I'm, I'm just a dude in, a, in, in his house talking, right? So the that fourth turning aspect for people who haven't seen that or, or you know heard about it i'm sure they have off of your channel but uh, strauss and how that fourth turning is just a generational time which is marked by a loss of faith in institutions 
And the granddaddy in all of this has got to be central banking. And when or if people lose faith in that institution and the scales come off their eyes and they see things as I think they really are, they go, wow, there's a lot of claims on a very small amount of actual real stuff. And the claims are magnificent. You know, how many trillions of debt, how many trillions of, of equities, how many trillions of currency all parked out there thinking if it wanted to, it could actually go and get real wealth anytime it wants to. And of course, once that illusion breaks down, that's where things go bad. And so they're trying very hard not, you know, make sure that doesn't happen and they'll print and they'll do all kinds of things. This won't all end tonight at 2.30 in the morning. It's going to take time because it's a lot of belief systems to unhook. But the earlier you can get in on this and understand this and see where this is headed, the earlier you can protect yourself from that, the better off you'll be. So all of this economic stuff that we've been talking about proves that if you haven't prepared already, you need to get prepared right now. And we're going to be talking about that in our next video. So I want to thank you very much for joining us, Chris. And for the audience, we'll see you next time. Chris. Bye, everyone.